What's up guys? Here we go into a video on Bradley Scott versus DKU because number one, you always say the name of the guy who kicked the other guy's ass first. So Bradley Scott versus DKU and uh, to be honest, what was kind of a sham of a fight? It wasn't really a fight. Like Bradley Scott didn't get to fight this dude. <laughs> it was kind of, you know, everything was just so crazy set up for it. DK, I mean, and that was like the to be expected. So it's like, I guess whose fault is it, you know, for having the expectations? But we're gonna watch some film study, and we're gonna watch a bunch of the fight, talk about some stuff, and we're gonna be talking about uh, DKU's m combat system or whatever m modern DK combat. Si I don't know what he calls it, but we're also gonna be kind of talking about Fouts boxing combat system. And Fouts boxing, shadow boxing combat system as well. Um, as I'm going to be kind of sh demonstrating kind of some of those ideas here or talking about them. Uh, and what are the th some of the things that DKU lacks as an instructor for fighting, right? Now, DKU, just real quick, he's a striking coach, right? Someone who already knows how to throw a punch might be able to learn some stuff from him, some techniques, right? DKU may be able to see where that guy's failing in his kinetic chain, what's going wrong, what he's not doing right in this instance or this instance, and might be able to correct it. But he can't throw a punch, right? He's not a puncher. He's not a striker. He's almost, like he's close, like a karate striker right now, right? He needs a couple years of training. But, um, uh, you know, or maybe like one month with Faust boxing, you know? But he's not a striker. He can, he's a teacher, right? And he thought that his teachings were going to have a direct translation to, to fighting, right? And there's an element of it that, that is, right? Unfortunately, that element starts when he's on the line with his opponent. Now, when he's on the line, if his opponent is standing in front of him and they're not doing anything, okay? I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> take a look at some of the fight, right? If the guy gets on the line with him here, right, and... Say, uh, traditionally, right? Bradley Scott takes a step, gets lead foot dominance, and as he takes this step, he finds himself in a striking position, right? One where maybe Bradley Scott's head is on the back side of the line, right? He hasn't crossed his hand yet, and DKU may be able to find a strike, okay? But in real combat, you don't start in this position. You don't get to start planted in front of your opponent. You don't get to... And, and n number two, right? Well... Let's go ahead and watch how a little bit of that unfolds, right? Because as Bradley Scott approaches, he's going to look at him penduluming onto DKU already. Just first move, pendulum right out the gate. And DKU says, oh, I got a pendulum off too. Just immediately. It just shows Bradley Scott's like, oh, he don't know anything. The fight's over already. He's letting him pendulum on him. And then the first thing that DKU does is move away. So all of Bradley Scott's momentum has already been told, yeah, I can go forward. So let's figure out where that goes. Well, we all know where the hell it goes. We saw the fight. Well, kind of. The what? Number one, picked off. Easiest shot ever. Number one, what happened? Bradley Scott controlling with the lead hand. And what is DKU try to do? Counter over the top of the lead hand. Now, did he faint it? Did he figure out how Bradley Scott was going to react to a punch? No, he didn't. He just expected to land the shot. Now, I know what DKU is thinking right here. He's like, oh God, oh God, this is the moment. Seven seconds in. This is my moment. This is my moment. I'm going to hit him. He's going to get dazed and I'm just going to go batshit crazy and I'm going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh God, please, please, please. Oh God, he blocked it. What do I do now? Oh Jesus. Okay. How did he get on the line with his opponent? Did he faint? Did he probe? He jumped, right? Oh, number one, it looks like he's stepping on the balls of his feet. Okay, now let's take a look at that. Ooh, on the ball, the ball of the front foot, a little bit of stepping, ball of the front foot there, a little bit of stepping on the back foot, step, step, okay, not so bad, but he's not planting his heel in the ground, stepping on the ball of his front foot here, okay, now, I want you to take a look at the difference, look at Bradley Scott taking a step forward on his heel, okay, like a real professional fighter, okay, and DKU like an amateur, Okay, like an amateur taking a step on the ball of his foot. Now, the commentators, they talked about this idea and they said, well, not this idea. They talked about the idea of Bradley Scott being very big and DKU being very small and that being a direct translation of how each of them are able to manage their weight. 
and manage their energy. Wrong! Number one, Bradley Scott is continuing his momentum going forward by transferring his weight through the heel so he can continue moving, right? He doesn't have to block his weight transition by stepping on the ball. But DKU is always stepping on the ball and blocking his weight transition. That means that he has to stop, start, stop, start, stop, start at a pace in front of a professional fighter who can feint and probe and change positions whenever he wants because that's what he does. Okay? Now, the idea that, that Bradley Scott was going to get tired faster than DKU is absolutely ridiculous. Because Bradley Scott's not using any energy to move around, and we've already seen DKU's, DKU use a ton of energy. Look at him con controlling the line on the ball of his foot with his jab here. Controlling the line. It's great. Great idea. Number one, they talk a little bit about his secret technique, coming out southpaw. I think that's what it was, to be honest. Pretty smart for DKU. Pretty, pretty smart. Uh, number one, it's much easier to know where the point of contact is, first contact, and to be safe, right? Now, Overall, it's going to be harder to get your offense off, right? DKU probably didn't realize that, that he was going to be more difficult for him to be weaving and getting around the line because of where his weight is going to wind up when he throws his punches. So he didn't realize that. Again, someone like Floyd Mayweather always struggled with southpaws, right? But was also always purposely aggressive to try to take advantage of what he thought are failings in the position defensively, right? And that's what Mayweather thought, someone who, so who people regard as one of the greatest defensive fighters of all, of all time, right? So thinking about those ideas, DKU being southpaw going backwards, yikes, he's the smallest, just was not a good idea. Because he can't really slip punches, right? He has no safe zone. Because once he gets to the front foot, he's right in the wheelhouse of all these punches. There's no, there's no angle for him to step off without being on the line, right? It's very, anyway, again... Someone who doesn't understand anything about fighting, right? So again, you think it's going to be clever, and some of it is, right? Maybe you're not prepared to fight a southpaw. When you're a professional fighter, that's not like really a thing, especially, <laughs> more embarrassingly, when you're the guy with less experience. <laughs> like, what are you even thinking? So anyway, controlling the line, right? But on the ball of his foot and stepping. Again, it takes a lot of energy, okay? This is... Something that people learn in the amateurs when they only have to fight for three rounds, right? People who only ever have to fight for three rounds, maybe two-minute rounds? <laughs> but uh, they don't actually ever have to learn how to transfer their weight and manipulate their weight. They just have to learn how to get into a position to let as many punches off go as fast as possible. So anytime they beat their opponent to the position on the line, they can just do that and then score points, right? Some of them learn to do that like a little bit harder, right? Think someone like... Oh, I don't know how to talk shit, but Tony Jeffries, right? Someone who says to step on the ball of their foot. That guy fought one decent professional fighter who could move his head and annihilated him, right? You've got to be able to move your head. You've got to be able to transfer your weight through your heels, right? Very amateur style, but it also keeps DKU's head in the center of his line, right? Because he's not allowing his weight to transfer to the front foot, cross the line, right? He's blocking all of his weight here so he can move off the line. Anyway, it just limits your ability, yada, yada, yada. Now, DKU thinking the fight's going to be over. And I want to say, Bradley Scott was talking about the, the back fists and uh, how he thought they were illegal and this and that. I think if you're worried that the fight, I guess if you're worried the fight's going to go all six rounds, then you're worried about him scoring points and getting ahead because here and then right to control, right? Like, in theory, this is great theory from from uh, DKU okay now again we're going to talk a little bit about this later as the fight progresses because right now everything DKU is doing is taking a, an incredible amount of energy because he's doing it like an amateur right now you can't always be the guy exploding out of your guard and using up all your energy because eventually your technique is going to suffer you're going to slow down in one of your kinetic chains and then someone who's a professional fighter who has good timing or this or that is going to be able to pick you off, right? Now, again, let's take a look at what everything that DKU does between that one engagement and the next engagement. What does he do? Nothing. Number one, it lets us look like he's bouncing on penduluming on the ball of his feet, right? Look at him. These small motions in his feet, right? This is a drill, okay? 
This is a drill that he's doing, and it takes a lot of energy. Okay, you want to do this, You want to practice this to get better at boxing. You don't want to be stuck, forced, transferring your weight, penduluming like this in front of your opponent, just praying that when he pendulums on you, that you'll time it to get away. So again, DKU using a lot of energy in his feet right now, while Bradley Scott is just walking down. He's just not even using any energy. He's like, "What? Well, when this fight starting?" No, I'm just kidding. Don't hate me for your accent. I'm not that great at accents and stuff. Actually, I think all of my accents sound the same. Actually, I got a pretty mean Vietnamese accent and a pretty good Indian one because um, I grew up in the Bay Area, not in England. So anyway, <laughs> DKU, after that attack, what does he do? Right? No fainting, no probing, nothing to stop Brad from getting on the line with him. And Brad's just coming forward, penduluming, getting his weight to the front foot and trying to catch him. And look, as fast as DKU is with this back fist, oh, I didn't get to talk about the idea of the back fist. Um, Bradley Scott probably should have just let him throw the back fist because it keeps him on the line because it's very predictable that he's going to try to control the line, right? So he makes an attack and then he tries to control the line with the back fist to close the gap in what he perceives as an opportunity for you to hit him. And it is an opportunity for you to hit him and he's not controlling it correctly, right? Once you start reading that it's going to be a shitty back fist, he's not going to have any weight to stop you from just driving forward and hitting him. But again, who knows, right? Maybe he, he gets like a bunch of free points and then, you know, that sucks too. But uh, it is a big flaw on his part. And it, I don't actually think that it benefited him a lot. Except that, you know, yeah, you got to make sure he fights in the rules of combat and that stuff. So all the other stuff aside, you know, in my opinion, if I wanted to knock him out, I'd be like, okay, go ahead. You could do that. That sucks anyway. Yes, yeah, scrub shit. So anyway, again, DKU thinking like a striker, right? Oh, it's going to be so easy. He's going to bring his weight forward and I'm going to throw a one, two and I'm going to get him. Now, I want you to take a look at his weight here, okay? Now, in your combat system, the DKU modern warfare combat, is that what it is? Modern combat warfare? Anyway, in Fouts Boxing Theory, it's, I think it's very important to have a very established rule set for getting on the line, a very established rule set for making your strike and a very established rule set for getting off the line safely, okay? Now, it does not appear that DKU is doing any of those things, right? Because again, being a great striker, if you're just a demo artist, the, the best thing you can hope to have is a great punch. We've seen that he doesn't have a great punch, right? We've seen that it was just kind of an underhanded arm punch, but it was a solid kinetic chain strike, right? It's solid, like a karate guy does, right? But it's not a real power shot. It's not, he's not going to knock anyone out unless they're like smaller than him, you know, like little guys. Mm. But he doesn't have a system for getting off the line safely and understanding what positions he's supposed to be in when he does that. He doesn't have a system for understanding what position he's supposed to be in when he gets on the line either. And that's part of the reason why DKU failed here. Because in spite of the fact that he is pretty quick, he, is, he does have decent striking theory, he doesn't know how to put it together in a rhythm and a pace at which he can chain getting on the line, making a, mm, getting on the line planted enough to make his perfect strike, then making his strike, and then being planted enough to get off the line correctly. Okay? And safely, without putting himself in, in a, further, a further hole against his opponent or a further poor position. Now again, he's pretty quick. So why is Bradley Scott able to pendulum away from him? Well, number one, he's not actually that quick, right? As we established, he's quick on the line. He's maybe quick at moving his hand from one, one space to another. But again, his ability to get on and off the line is average at best. Again, it's the first time he's had to put any of this theory and stuff and technique to the test, and he just doesn't know what he's doing. Very basic feint, picked off already, right? Bradley Scott's getting more and more comfortable understanding what attack is going to come, and he's just got to walk him down, right? Feint him a little bit, and again, right now he's not getting uh, DKU to counter him. Again, DKU uses a lot of energy being on the balls of his feet, right? Look at the bouncing, right? Now, number two, funny thing about this not being a fight. How insanely big is this ring? Is this, is this not the biggest ring you've ever seen? Am, am I tripping? 
Because normally, like, when you see small guys, the ring looks this big, right? But these are not small guys, right? Anyway, we're not going to talk too much about that, but a lot of funny stuff in here, right, in the fight. Now, DKU pretty quick on his feet, right? On the balls of his feet, using all that energy, stepping on his foot. It's probably an accident, right? But again, balls of his feet, lots and lots of energy, okay? He does not come out nearly at this pace in the second round, right? Now, I want to show you guys something really, really excellent boxing, you guys. Really, really high-level stuff here. Look at Bradley Scott controlling the line here with his lead hand and controlling the line with his rear hand. Very, very high-level stuff. And I want to say it's easy to do because he's in front of a noob, right? But look at him controlling the line here, right? And he, DKU is waiting. He's like, oh, I just got to get him to play with the lead hand, and I'm going to smack him with this one. Just like any beginner. Everyone knows that's the first step in learning to fight. That's the first step of craft. That's the first. The problem is DKU knows that this is the way to do this, but he can't figure out how to get into this position on the back foot with this hand cocked in any other way. He has no real footwork. He has no real established theory to get on and off the line. He doesn't know how to box from this position, how to step and slide with his jab. He doesn't know how to move in and out of this position freely. So he has to keep moving. He's never going to be planted enough to find a way to land a powerful strike or a powerful enough strike to put someone like, like Bradley Scott down. Now, I don't want to even say someone like Bradley Scott, okay? Any professional fighter, any probably amateur, probably any amateur with 10 fights, right? Maybe five fights at the same weight of DKU. DKU would not put them down either, okay? Now again, DKU is not boxing here, right? He's trying not to fight here. He's trying to move away. And obviously that's maybe part of the plan, right? Not have as many engagements as possible. Pick and find your shots, right? Was that the idea? Did he think that he was going to knock Bradley Scott out? Or did he think that he was going to outpoint him? I'm not even sure, right? But uh, again, pendulum stepping, right? Lots and lots of energy with these moves, right? Now I want to point out again something else that Bre that DKU is not doing here. Number one, every time you cross your opponent's line, you have an opportunity to hit them, and DKU is doing a lot of crossing the line and not a lot of hitting. Okay. Again, it shows that he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't understand all his opportunities. He doesn't know where they're coming from. Now, again, trying to close the space or create some space and wind down the time, right? Ducking below. I guess he did try to throw a punch here. Nope, he's just ducking below the waist. And again, this is one of those problems that DKU is going to run into being a southpaw he doesn't know where he's supposed to go to get away from this shot, right? He cannot slip forward away from it, right? Because he doesn't have his leg there to bring his weight to. So he can only slip to this position. So if Bradley Scott throws the right hand and he slips this shot and it goes over his shoulder, he's on the line for the left now, right? So he has no safe zones, and there's just not enough space when you move to the front foot to be dodging and blocking punches here, right? So if he moves into this zone, crossing the line with Bradley Scott, he better be fucking punching, right? He better punch this dude in the face, and then he better come back with a hook, because Bradley Scott just threw one, and he's damn sure going to be coming back with the hook, whether it's to the head or to the body. So again, another one of those things that someone who's an amateur that doesn't know anything about real fighting is going to do, okay? Now again... His defense, right? Getting on and off the line, knowing how to do that safely. He doesn't understand how to do that and tying up, yada, yada. Nothing wrong with it, right? Necessarily in the beginning. But that's one of the problems with, you know, I guess modern boxing and the popularity of like someone like Floyd Mayweather who says, what I'm doing is boxing. It is boxing. You know, like here, here's the... Uh, um, Here's the, the best quote for that, right? It's from Game of Thrones. Any man who says who must say he's king is no true king. <laughs> if you have to tell everyone that that's boxing, that's not boxing, I guess, right? If you've got to tell everyone you're the best ever all the time, I guess you're not really the best ever, right? 
Anyway, I guess if you got to tell everyone you're the modern day Bruce Lee, you're not really the modern day Bruce Lee. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know who said that to him or who made him think that about him, but actually, definitely, he's not, though. So, anyway. More of the fight. And we're not going to watch the whole fight. We're going to go a little bit more. But I want to talk about, again, no ability to control the space here, right? Probing, right? Head movement. No control of the space between him and his opponent because Bradley Scott can just move into it almost any time he wants, right? Oh, is DKU going to throw a punch? Nope. Moving off. <laughs> Where's the fainting? Where's the probing? I think he's still getting a piece of that. Getting a piece of that. Very predictable movement. Now, what I want to show you guys, this is supposed to be a hook, right? He's leaping in, throwing this shot. This takes a lot of energy, okay? This is supposed to be a really hard punch because it takes a lot of energy. Now he's getting off the line decently, and then he's going to jump right into that punch again, and then right off the line again. But again, it takes a lot of energy to do this. Now, real quick, this is what I want to talk about. So here, knowing how to safely get on and off the line with your opponent, right? Taking a big pendulum step here, or pendulum slip, moving into the shot. Here's another sign that DKU is not a real striker, that his application of it is false. You can't take your eyes off your target. You can't. You have to know where your target is at all times. Okay? Number one, if you take your eyes off your target, you're losing power. Number two, this punch was not even turned over. Number three, there's no weight on this back foot. Where is he driving from? There is zero power in this punch at all. This is, again, like a kid, an amateur who has like maybe five fights, maybe. But I want to say the potential for power is there, right? There's a lot of things in his kinetic chain that are going correctly, but he's never done it in a fight before. He's never had to learn how to take all the things he's learned about his kinetic chain and turn it into real fighting, okay? Now, real quick, we're going to take a little break and show you a little bit of Heavy bag demo, it's just me moving around. If you want to learn how to hit the heavy bag here, I'm going to show you a package that I'm showing. It'll teach you a little bit about these drills, these pendulum drills, moving around the bag, controlling it. But um, here we go into here. This is going to be the Fouts Boxing Combat System. It's not finished yet. Uh, actually, this is going to be the trailer for it. It's going to be the first video. You can watch this or you can just buy the, pro the program. But... Um, it's $2.99, and it's going to have the Fouts Boxing Combat System, and the first video is an intro, and it's going to teach you how to do the Fouts Boxing Combat System on the pads, okay? Uh, it's going to teach you as the pad holder how to do the drills, and teach you as the fighter how to do the drills. Um, all of the drills, including pendulum steps, pull counters, and uh, obviously your straight punches, um, but how to set them up on the pads with Fouts Boxing Combat System, safely controlling to get on the line, to get off the line, how to safely get off the line with the correct footwork, the correct positions. Um, and then, one of the greatest defensive fighters of our generation, right? I'll say of our generation. But I want to say that Mayweather understands a lot about boxing. Even though he didn't have the greatest position ones and position twos and power punching, he has a great mind for boxing uh, and fighting as a fighter, and his understanding of what position he was supposed to be in defensively for most of his career was spot on. Now, I extrapolate on a lot of the ideas and the theories that I think that Mayweather uses with my own combat system and demonstrate them in some of the ways that Mayweather uses them. And then, again, in this video here with some of my patrons, and I teach them, um, and I'll teach you with these guys filmed. This one is Caleb Plant having a very similar style as Mayweather. And I talk about this idea as a, as a track theory. And I'll teach you all of the positions that you're supposed to be in when you get on and off the line with your opponent. All of the positions that you're looking to be in to safely engage with them, to get on the line, to land your strikes, and then to get off the line safely, okay? Now, I'm also in this video package gonna show you here 
This is the first video series, or this is the first time that I did these drills with my boxing student, Theo. And you can see our progress as we go from here to this video. This one's about six minutes. This one's about 30 minutes of all the demo drills and um, showing you guys how to do them with each level of intricacy and you know all that fun stuff, but teaching you my combat theory on the pads. Now, if you'll notice, well, you won't notice because there's not going to be any demos out here, but uh, I want to say it's very similar, but much, much more evolved form of what you would say Errol Spence's drills, if that's the closest way that I would have to, uh, to teach you guys, uh, the way that Errol Spence does pad work. So, but it's a much, much more complete system that includes pull counters, pendulum steps, uh, stepping and sliding with your jab, um, and getting on and off the line safely before and after attacks, okay? It's a very, very comprehensive boxing combat system. And again, to teach you all of the things that would take someone like DKU and turn him into a decent fighter, okay? Now, obviously, there's other stuff. I don't want to say decent. I want to say a great fighter because this is my package, and to be honest, I think it's fantastic. But um, there are other things you're going to so – anyway, anyway. It also comes with some line drills. So if you've been following along with the Fouts Boxing Combat System, the way that I teach very karate-like boxing on the line um, in a kind of horse stance style, it'll teach you how to, how to learn to step and slide with your punches with that very karate style boxing, okay? So that's taught in there because so much of the emphasis of this package is learning to step with your punches. Again, get Fouts Boxing Combat System, right? Getting on and off the line. And then we scroll down here and there are eight videos for seven shadow boxing schools that teach you kind of my Fouts Boxing or Fouts Shadow Boxing Combat System and how to take what we learn from the line drills and turn it into real active Fouts Boxing boxing, okay? So it's my personal shadow boxing combat system uh, to teach you the best and the greatest drills for not only developing your speed, your power, your athleticism, but learning the rules of boxing, okay? Now it's very similar to learning how to do slip line drills and uh, slip bag drills and all that stuff but without those tools, okay? I can teach you how to shadow box and how to learn your head movement, how to learn to slip and roll, how to throw all of your punches in this shadow boxing, but do it correctly with perfect body mechanics while also building your athleticism, your speed, and your power, okay? Turning you into a real athlete, okay? And it's eight parts, seven shadow boxing schools, and it teaches you exactly what you're trying to do with all your drills and your shadow boxing and how to put together all of your super advanced stuff, okay? Now, these are the videos that I've been posting in my Patreon for my $50 members. So these are their boxing school lessons, okay? Uh, now, these are not all of them. These are just a couple of them. But I think they are very, very, very important and key pieces in your boxing development. And I'm including them in this package. I'm also including in this package these eight videos here, and these are the pendulum boxing package that I teach uh, my pendulum boxing and how to transfer your weight and really get the most out of your power, okay? It's very, very, very important drills, and uh, I created these drills to be the most efficient way to learn pendulum boxing, to learn to transfer your weight from one leg to the other, and then to the other, and then to the other, and then back in a very... Mayweather style, I say that because people relate to that idea of the chaining of the transitions together, but a very fast paced and fun drill style to teach you pendulum boxing footwork, to teach you pendulum boxing head movement, to teach you pendulum boxing head positions, to teach you pendulum boxing body mechanics, okay, to teach you all the correct positions. If you saw, um, Tank Davis versus Isaac Cruz. Isaac Cruz using a very large amount of pendulum boxing. If you want to learn to move your body like that, these are the best drills that will ever be created to teach them. I promise. Okay? It's four drills to teach you all kinds of different pendulum drills and rules. It's very, very cool. And then, boxing is a dance. You've heard Tiafimo Lopez quote it. You've heard him quote it. This is where it came from. Okay? 
teach you how to hit the heavy bag. I don't want to say like Tiafimo Lopez, but teach you how to hit the heavy bag like me. Okay, teach you how to take that pendulum boxing that I was teaching in these videos and transfer it to the bag so you can learn to control the bag, knock it around, um, and all that stuff. And anyway, I just want to say, uh, I don't know how impressive it looks, but I'm only like five foot six. Okay, I'm a small guy, and that's like a hundred pound bag or whatever. So, uh, anyway, anyway, so that's the Felt Boxing Combat System. Um, and as a bonus feature, it also here has a video for my jump rope theory. Um, now, one of my jump rope theory videos is kind of it kind of got leaked and it's been going around and other coaches have been seeing it as I've been hearing them talk about it. But um, jump rope is one of the most important things you can do for your boxing because everything that we do is so similar to jumping rope. Our pendulum steps, our slips, our rolls. We want to be getting our head movement. There's a lot of things that we need to be doing in our jumping rope that apply directly to our boxing. And this video gives you some great uh, patterns and ideas, and I teach you why we do these drills, okay? Um, and why they're important. And the reason is, again, in order to learn to step with your punches correctly and learn to step and slide with your punches, you have to learn these things, okay? You absolutely have to. Anyone, in fact, if your coach doesn't tell you that, that you need to do more jumping rope than just three minutes of warm up a day, He's failing you. Jump rope is not a warm-up. It's an exercise. And it is mandatory. Okay. Now, real quick, we're going to go over here to my Instagram again. And I wanted to bring up these videos here. Here we go. This is Coach Anthony, right? LMAO, you're the guy that wants to fight him. He meant to say me. Now, a little bit of backstory. I called... Uh, prediction versus uh, his fighter, Tevin Farmer versus Jojo Diaz. And I called it the easiest fight to predict. Uh, Jojo Diaz beat his ass. It was an easy fight to score. Then we watched uh, some, and I didn't know it was his fighter at the time, but someone sent him the video, and then his fighters started joining my Patreon. We became good friends. One of their name is Long Dick McGee. Uh, thanks, Patreon. Uh, but Coach Anthony joined too, and he started teaching my boxing and teaching my theories and t teaching boxing in exactly the same way that I do. Right? No one's ever said it the way that I, do, I did before, and now all of a sudden Coach Anthony's saying it exactly like I do, and he's claiming it's from his big brain and, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, everyone knows he's a fraud. But he comes to my Instagram, and I'm not like the biggest Instagram guy. I didn't know this for a couple of weeks but because um, I don't get notifications on my phone. I didn't, you know, anyway, anyway. This is horrendous, Eddie. Yada, yada, yada. And then he gets Eddie here. You're a joke, man. I would love to box you. And then he says, I'll let you use both hands. I'll just use a jab. Cool, right? So I'm like five foot six. When I fought, I fought at 120. Eddie Chambers is a heavyweight fighter. You know, I don't know if he was ever champion or not. But uh, Coach Anthony stealing my content, coming to my Instagram, talking shit to me, right? Uh, and then he won't get into the ring with me. He has to send ex-heavyweight fighter who has like 50 pro fights to come do his bidding, right? Like a real man. Well, I'll tell you what, buddy. So this video here, this is actually, uh, and it's funny that they came to this video in particular because this video is the template for the Fouts Boxing Combat Theory. This is one of the most important drills in all of my boxing. And he came here to talk shit. Okay, so DKU got in the ring with Bradley Scott, right? Now, I've been having a terrible time getting anybody to get in the ring with me. I called Tony Jeffries out. He doesn't want to fight. Hand problems, right? A guy who thinks... Anyway, sure, buddy. Sure. Coach Anthony didn't want to get in the ring with me, right? As we can see here, Fran Sands, I told him I'd fight that guy. I mean, he's old, so I told him I'd fight one of his students if he wanted because I caught him stealing my boxing, trying to teach it. Tom Yankello, same thing. I'll fight any one of your students. You want to fight? You want to steal my content? One of, one of uh, Tom Yankello's new catchphrases, right, is making two moves at once. That's my boxing theory. That's my whole pendulum boxing theory. That's the whole reason. Anyway, making more than one move at a time, right? Again, these guys want to steal my content. They don't want to even give me credit or say my name. But it's okay. And they want to keep getting called out for being frauds, right? Because here I am, again, calling you a fraud, saying you're still... Anyway, saying that I would fight you. But 
Eddie Chambers is the only person that wants to get in the ring with me. Okay, oh, I called out Marvin Cook. I said I'd box Marvin Cook too if he wanted to box. Anybody I've called out. Okay, I'll, I'll box you. Eddie Chambers is the only guy that wants to box. Okay, so real quick, we're going to go reply Eddie Chambers. Oh, it's not on screen. Okay, it's not on screen. I'm going to say, all right, bro, let's do it. So DK did six rounds with Bradley Scott, right? In theory, okay? I'm going to propose three rounds with Eddie Chambers, but then Eddie Chambers has to make Coach Anthony get in the ring with me for three rounds after. So, three rounds, Matt the Sandman Fouts versus Fat Eddie Chambers. And then, three spent rounds of Matt the Sandman Fouts versus Fat Freddy. Okay? You guys want to box? Now, they wanted to talk shit about this drill because a few years ago, um, I actually got injured, not to be sound like DKU and shit, but I got injured, I had a really severe boxing injury and I had to quit. Um, and I actually only got into boxing um, because I had tried training and I couldn't really get in shape. I didn't really smoke weed at the time. Um, okay, let me put my reply in so you guys can see it. There we go. Let's do it. Me and you and, and then me and Fat Freddy for three. Okay, so... Uh, but they called me out, or um, anyway, people have been calling me out about my technique and this drill and this and all that stuff because um, I've been posting demos and stuff uh, injured. I've been posting demos like, well, I'm not in shape. I'm not in boxing shape. I had a boxing injury many years ago in 2012. Uh, a guy tore my abdomen. He broke my rib, uh, and I couldn't move, you know, for like six months, and I lost all my athleticism and all that training, you know. You know a lot of stuff, but, you know, I tried to train at another gym, uh, but I just couldn't get in shape. It was before I started smoking weed. But because of my injury, I got into uh, massage therapy, learning about the body, and I was able to grow and learn a lot about why I was still injured and what was going on with my body while I was injured. And anyway, I feel like I'm finally ready because this was about a year ago uh, when I posted these videos and I was still not in great shape, still struggling to get in shape and get stronger, um, and, you know, figure out, you know, how to get back to where I was. Because a lot of times when people get injured, they never get back to where they were, right? They never figure out how to be an athlete again. So anyway, all the drills and all the demos and all the stuff that I've, I do in my, in my drills and my videos and that I teach you guys are all the things that I've been doing to get back in shape. Or all the things that I've been doing to teach myself how to become an athlete again. Okay? So, um, let's box. Eddie Chambers. Anyway. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get back. I think we've been gone for like an hour now, like 20 minutes of that sales pitch. My bad, you guys. DKU, where does his body wind up after he throws those punches? Safely on or off the line? Now, if Bradley Scott didn't jump off the line so far, maybe he was able to set up an attack or a counter off of this shot, right? If he wasn't penduluming off or he expected it. Because DKU is making a lot of very serious errors here crossing the line. Because he doesn't know where he's supposed to be when he finishes an attack. He doesn't know what position he needs to be so he can safely get off the line. Now, time out. It's starting to look like he's stepping on his foot more and more on purpose because it's happening quite often, okay? Now, again, just pendulum stepping. He's not really trying to fight. He's just trying to circle out. But again, a real fighter, all of a sudden you're here. You're in the ring. Now he's controlling the space. Bradley Scott's cutting the ring off. And no matter how big the ring is, no matter how much energy DKU uses, he can't find enough space in the ring to get away because it's not hard to cut the ring off against an idiot, but also it's not that hard if you're a decent fighter, right? So a lot of things really working against DKU here, right? A lot of things, okay? Oop, so DKU has to cross the line, right? And again, every time you cross the line, there's an attack. DKU not trying to get caught in the ring, obviously. Now, make, trying to make it look like this is real boxing, sure, sure. But walking into almost a huge punch, right? Now, Bradley Scott's going to, uh-oh, here we go. This is an eight count. 
You got to give him a standing eight count. Time. He had to turn his back away from his opponent. This is cheating. Only Floyd Mayweather gets away with this. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to turn your body away from your opponent. Check this out, guys. Look at where this engagement starts. All right? It starts here. Bradley Scott's fainting him, pushing him off his line, controlling the space, controlling the space, cutting the ring off, right? The engagement has not ended yet. Bradley Scott has to have good footwork and good positioning this whole time to continue to have DKU trapped, to continue to cut the ring off. He has to continue to go from position to position to position to position to find this strike. And now, because he's a better fighter than DKU, he's not so far out of position that while DKU exercised all of his technique to pendulum and move around the ring and do A, B, C, and D, he's out of position in spite of the fact that, number one, he just used one defensive move, and then Bradley Scott used one offensive move, and he was in a worse position. Number one, he shouldn't be. He's, he should be faster if he's a better fighter. He should beat him to that position. So Bradley Scott, again, proving that he's a better martial artist than DKU on every level, okay? Every single level, you guys. But showing that, you know, DKU's not ready to be in a fight at all, okay? He's not ready to be in a fight at all, okay? This is a standing eight count. Number one, the only time you're allowed to have a reprieve from your opponent pummeling you is number one, if you knock them down. Number two, if they knock you down. And then, if you get more than a 10 second reprieve, the fight's over. Right? So here we go. Turning his back, not allowed to do that. Bradley Scott worked really hard to get into that position to hit him, and then to, for him to turn his back like that and take away the opportunity the hard work that Bradley Scott put in to get into that position. You know what they call that? Horse shit. Right? So Bradley Scott doing the right thing, calling him out and saying, okay, control the space, put a pace on him. Okay? Pendulum with him, cut the ring off, and now all of a sudden DKU's in trouble. Ducking below the waist, right? Trying to get away from the shot, but again, DKU making a huge fundamental mistake, and instead of being able to slip Past the right hand when it comes, he has to continue ducking below, ducking back, right? He doesn't want to cross the line because he'll find himself right next to this hand. So he's stuck, right? Very, very poor strategy. Whoever told him to do this, yikes. Uh-oh. Very amateur-like strike. Gets picked off easily. Good pendulum off the line from Brad. Boop. Control. Pendulum control. Never losing control of DKU's head and DK crying about getting hit in the head right there, right? That's, is that what he's talking about, getting hit in the head, in the back of the head? Because he cries a lot in this fight. Let's crow quick. Look at DKU on the balls of his feet here again. Actually, how's his setup? How does he get on the line? Is it good? No. How does he get off the line? Is that good? No. Again, Fouts Boxing Combat System, check it out. Two ninety nine. Oh. And real quick, um, like I said, it's, it's $2.99. If you want to learn it by yourself, check it out. It's $2.99. All the content is there for you to become a great fighter, to learn a lot. It's really, really, really excellent stuff. Um, but if you want to join my Patreon and you want to see the film studies that I put on Patreon as well as take part in the personal boxing coaching, it's 50 bucks to sign up, 50 bucks a month. But if you sign up and you want... I'll send you a 50% off promo code for the Fouts Boxing Combat System, okay? And you can learn to uh, do all that stuff with me as your coach, okay? Um, I think it's an actually an excellent starter, not starter package, but an excellent way for me to get you to the level of the people that are in my Discord, the people that are my private boxers and stuff. And again, these are the lessons that I'm teaching and giving them. So I hope they're not super mad at me because... You know, we've been working in, you know, anyway. So anyway, check it out. 50% off if you join my Patreon. Getting fainted. Stabbing forward with this jab. Again, trying to get full power, right? Again, it getting picked off every single time. DKU not fast enough to interact with Brad and time him coming forward. Even the referee is getting in the way. 
Now he's found himself in a position. Either he's going to make an attack or he's going to duck. Okay, he waited and he ducked. DKU doing a good job trying to control the space with his forearm. Really high level technique. Find out where your opponent is, right? He's not doing it the way that I would say to do it. But his theory is correct here, right? Find your opponent. Don't get knocked out, right? And again, he doesn't know where he's supposed to go, right? Eating a big body shot, eating another big body shot. And again, this is usually, right here, this is usually where people fail, right here. This is usually where those martial artists are going to fail against the guy who's been striking for a long time or, or an actual fighter. Um, actually, Josh Taylor fought a, um, a Thai guy a couple months ago who was a power puncher and... I wanted to go put some money on the Thai guy, and I said, okay, this fight's going to end really early. Either Taylor's going to get hit and dropped because this guy hits pretty hard, or Taylor's going to get hit, and then he's going to be like, oh, screw this. I'm going to go to the body, and he's going to stop him to the body, and that's exactly what happens, right? That's usually what happens to those kind of martial artsy guys, especially the guys that come over from Thai. Not that those guys don't take body shots, but they don't take boxer's punches, right, to the body. Not that the Thai guys can't body punch too, you know, and get kicked in the body. All this. It's different, though. Is different. Anyway, props to DKU for not just going down, right? Now, getting on the line, right? Controlling the line. Control, control. Landing a strike? Nope. Doesn't land a strike. Does he get off the line very well? No. He doesn't know what to do after throwing this strike, after winding up in this position, so he has to find himself in this one. He has to beg the referee for an opportunity to, to not get hit by fighting outside the constraints of boxing. Now, number one, I don't have a problem with clinching and yada, 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 but this I have a problem with. Putting your, head, your hand over your opponent's head like this and try to put him in a headlock, definitely have a problem with that. Brad ain't taking any shit, right? Bradley doesn't have to put up with that because he's bigger than him, right? So a lot of that kind of stuff, like if he fought a smaller guy, DKU would get away with that shit, right? He'd manhandle that guy. Oh... Trying to big pendulum left hand. Gets picked off. I want you to see how easily Bradley picks it off too. He has complete control of it. Complete control of it. He has two blocks. Two hands controlling the line. I'm not saying that this is how I'd always teach it. But no, no shot at landing that punch. And then this one gets picked off too. Now, again, it's difficult to get into position and land a power shot. And then get into position and land another power shot. It's very difficult. And DKU showing that just because he has power from a standing position doesn't mean he can actually strike a person, right? You still have to know how to get on the line. Again, check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System. <clears throat> learn how to do that. And then you have to learn how to get off the line. You have to learn what the angles are. You have to know what positions are safe. DKU failing here. He has no idea what position he's supposed to be in to be safe. And again, look at him try to go to the front foot, right? No safety there. We're not going to watch that. Get up, bruh. Get up. And there's the last thing that we're going to We're going to go a little bit into the second round. But DKU doing a lot, a lot of poor boxing. Now, Bradley shooting the one, control, and then controlling the line and probing, allowing him to shift forward. If you guys want to check out the Fouts Boxing, this is day one of Shadow Boxing School. Teach you how to do this move. Okay? And then controlling the line with the left hand. And then getting into position to land a strike with the right again after closing the distance, right? Beautiful work from Brad. <clears throat> DKU, decent footwork, right? He's got a, a good pendulum step. He uses a lot of energy. His footwork being, again, his best asset. Oh, man. Okay. How did he not go down from that? Be honest. Be honest. It's a good shot right there. Okay. Now, number one, one of my theories, the better a puncher you are, the better a punch you can take on average, okay? Now, DKU, not a very good striker right now. He doesn't have the mechanics, the coordination to know how to get on the line and land a powerful strike, right? He knows how to get on the line and connect the line, touch you, but he doesn't know how to generate power, right? But he has a decent kinetic chain, so he's going to absorb some punches pretty decently too as his neck is not going to fold when he gets hit. Right? He's seeing these punches coming a little bit, rolling with them. Think the difference between someone rolling with a punch and someone not rolling with a punch. Right? When someone gets hit really clean, think uh, Mayweather getting hit really clean from the pull counter Right? when he pull countered against Marcos Maidana. By the way, if you want to learn real pull counters, 
Check out Fouts Boxing Combat System. It's in there. Real pull counters, real pendulum steps, real ways to set them up. Um, but rolling with your punches takes a lot of the steam away from them because the snap always goes into a very particular place. And again, that's where DKU is failing. He doesn't know how to get his body into a position to land a strike that's still going to have any snap on it. Right? He has no idea how to do that. Right there, when he rolls under the line. Number one, the referee should be warning him here. You're not allowed to put your face down on the line here. It's not even just about ducking below the waist. Because you can duck, but putting your head down like this, very dangerous. If Bradley Scott hit him on the top of the head, he might break his hand. Very, very common in injury in the amateurs. In the amateurs. Okay? Now, uh, when he makes that punch, right? When he crosses the line, he throws it. Is he turning that punch over? Is there any power in it? Nope. Nothing, right? Again, DKU has no idea how to get into position to actually land a punch, right? And then he has to tie up. And I love that Bradley Scott, excellent control. Created a little bit of space for his head. Now with the space that he created with his head, he's going to allow it to move his hand or, or this hand so he can create some space to punch, right? Allowing his head to create the gap. Beautiful work there. Now, another one of the big problems with this fight. In between rounds was like a minute and 25 seconds long each time. A minute and 25 seconds at least. I think it was a minute and 28. But here, this fast forward here, so the, the bell rings here, okay? This is a one minute jump, and they're still waiting, okay? They're still waiting, they're still waiting, they're chilling, they're chilling. 20 more seconds go by. Here's another 10 second jump. Now the round starts. Again, almost a minute and 30 seconds. Now, we're not going to watch the whole fight again. We're just watching this and just enough for me to talk about my Fouts combat system and call out Eddie, Fat Eddie Chambers, see if he want to fight. DKU controlling the space, stepping on the ball of his foot, using a lot of energy, and then jumping off the line, right? Oh, Bradley Scott trying to control the space with the jab. Now that DKU is not countering, control with the hook as he pendulums forward, trying to close the distance. DKU's running out of space. Right hand, he shifts forward, controls with the left, and then lands the right hand again, right? So setting this strike up, excellent boxing from, uh, from Bradley Scott. Can't figure out now, right, if he's going to try to hold or if he's going to pendulum step away, right? So Bradley Scott doing a good job of finding an opportunity to get into position to land his strikes. And then DKU ducking his head. Again, you're not allowed to put your head down. It's not even just about... Ducking below the waist, it's putting your head down like this because landing a strike on the top of the head could very, be very damaging to a fighter's hand. DKU, again, has no idea where his target is. He's not punching. He's just swinging his hands, right? Again, he's not a really striker himself. He doesn't know how to put together all the pieces of the kinetic chain in a proper function. And then found in the corner, right? Ooh, trying to hold, trying to get a, below the waist or get a hold of him. But Bradley Scott making him pay for that. And again, it takes a lot of energy to wrestle him, right? It takes a lot of energy. Talking about behind the head, right? He's setting it up, all that bullshit, the whole fight, right? Now again, he has no idea how to safely get on the line. Watch him slowly step, right? Again, he doesn't really know how to step and get on the line. Uh, safely. He doesn't know how to do it and feint and probe and control his opponent. Fouts Boxing Combat System, if you want to learn how to do that, check it out. And he doesn't know what to do with himself after. Okay? Look at how much energy he uses in this one single engagement that was so wildly unsuccessful, right? And Bradley Scott, what? What did he do? He's like, oh, what, bro? I'm coming forward. Oh, he's going to attack me? Oh, easy slip. He gets his right glove up, catches what could be any punch, right? If he turned this left hand over here, he could have probably stopped him. Like, if he saw that that was going to be a punch coming here, right? He could have turned that over. Wow. But anyway, excellent move from Bradley Scott, getting off the line, getting control him with the left hand, and then moving back on the line. And we're getting to the part where we're going to end it pretty close. Body shot. Now, look at DKU figuring out that he can't cross the line. Now, 
Lots of fundamental mistakes from someone who has no combat experience. DKU, decent, pull counter, right? Trying to pull counter. Getting trapped on the inside of his opponent. Bradley Scott is penduluming on him, getting lead foot dominance and hitting him to the body, right? Oh, Bradley Scott's created some space with his head. Oh, body shot. Uh-oh. Tries to roll and tries to land his own shot. And again, DKU doesn't know where he's supposed to be. Throwing this shot, no power in it, nothing. His head's down below the waist. His head is ducked. He's using his head as defense now. Illegal. Brad Pendulum's on him again. Controls him with the lead hand. Excellent weight management on the heel. This is going to be a big shot. Boom. Control him. Big shot. Body shot. Oh. And now this, guys, this is the end of the fight. This is where Bradley Scott doesn't really get credit for knocking DKU out. Okay? Look at him fall to the ground after that. Right? He's going to eat this body shot. And now his body just sinks. See how he falls? This is not an accident. This is not because Brad is holding him. This shot, I think, legitimately hurt him. And then he tried to fall forward and hold on, but he didn't even get his feet under him, right? Normally, he could take that step and close that distance. Boom. But instead, he doesn't get his foot under him. Bradley Scott creates just enough space, and he falls on his own. He's not even going to go down. And he's down for a long time. He doesn't complain about his body shot, right? But I do think the body shot hurt him initially. And now he's going to get how much time? Now, not to nitpick and be like, see, I told you guys. Because it's not what it's about, right? DKU did a decent job with the rule set and with the hugging and with the other stuff. And with the referee giving him like literally like 20 seconds of a rest break on the inside. And then they would break them. And then they would clinch again. And then there would be another 20 seconds. And then... DKU might move around for 15 seconds and then a whole minute has gone by and Bradley Scott being a gentleman and not just throwing DKU off of him and forcing him into a fight gets kind of screwed over the, out of the idea that he was going to get to knock him out. But DKU couldn't stop him from landing any punches, right? Anyway, I think the idea that DKU wound up in the hospital and not in the winner's circle is very, very, very important. Okay, because as we can see, Bradley Scott didn't even go all out. He didn't even get to train for this fight, right? Let alone show like what a human being who has real trained martial arts experience can do to another man. We didn't get to see that. Okay, we didn't get to see that. Bradley Scott did not get to do his year of training or this or be in shape, right? Now, again getting back to my call out of Eddie Chambers, right? He wanted to call me out when I'm still recovering from my injury and everyone, and all the people, you know, who tease me about my, uh, my drill videos on YouTube, right? I post my drills, right? And then I talk about those drills on Patreon. I get to show people how, you know, how silly people look when they talk about my drills and stuff because I demonstrate and I teach farther on, on Patreon, but Calling me out when I'm injured, right? Yada, yada, yada. You don't have an opportunity to train. But Fat Eddie Chambers, I'm ready now. If you want to set that up, I'll do three rounds with you. And no matter how that goes, right, unless you stop me and you knock me out, right, Coach Anthony has to do three rounds with me. Okay? Let's set it up. Anybody want to fight? <laughs> now, um, anyway, um, yeah, Bradley Scott, you had mentioned wanting to do a, a podcast at some point. Um, if that's still on the table, man, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I'd love to hear more about your, your trip and more about the rules and more about, you know, I don't know, a lot of stuff. You know, I haven't actually, I'm pretty, usually pretty busy, so I don't get to catch a lot of the post-fight stuff, but I'm going to watch your guys' video today about it. Uh, hopefully there's some film in there too. But, um, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, one more thing too, while I'm doing my call-outs, uh, um, phase Sensei, no, not Faze. Sensei S Smith, Seth, Seth. Sensei Smith, S Sensei Seth. Um, he recently did a video with Tony Jeffries, increasing your power thirty percent. And uh, I thought it was a really funny video. And um, I left him an invitation, uh, if they wanted to, to do a power punching seminar with me. Okay, Sensei Seth. Uh, and I promise. Minimum, minimum 
I will improve your power from what Tony Jeffries did. So you were at 100%. Now you're at 130. I'll put you to minimum 260%. I actually think I'll triple your power. But I'll say minimum, double what you're doing now. Not only that, but I'll completely and forever change the way you think about striking, how to strike and how to throw a punch, and what real power punching is. Okay? So anyway, if, uh, if you'd be interested and we could demo it, I could tell you a little bit more about my proposition. Um, but um, yeah, I would love the opportunity to prove not only that I know more about striking, right? But that I'm a, a legit striking coach. Okay, I don't want people want to talk shit and laugh about YouTube because I don't show all the stuff that I teach, but um, I think it'd be a lot of fun. And I'm sure all of Tony Jeffrey's fans, uh, or at least the ones that have come to my channel to talk shit to me, would love to see me make a fool out of myself. So what do you think? Anybody want to send that call out to Sensei Seth? Um, I left him a message, but and nobody responded, so I don't think that they're very interested. Um, as I realized with the fight Bible, it turns out that that guy and I see Mike, that guy who said he's got the Mike Tyson drill that he put out literally like a week after I put out my video with uh, Mighty Mouse about the pendulum step, copying it, <laughs> trying to, anyway, uh, all those guys are friends. So maybe it'll be more difficult than I thought. But I see Mike, if you would like that demo, if you would like me to show you that you don't know as much about striking as you think you do. Uh, put that call out to you too. Maybe we could even spar, right? We're about the same size, right? You got a little bit better of a beard than I do. <laughs> anyway, um, come on. Somebody fucking fight me, yo.